So we're here in Nuremberg at the Embedded World, and uh, what are you doing here? Oh, looking around for interesting stuff. Uh, I mean, embedded components are always interesting, but mostly I'm looking for parts that could be used to uh, optimize that ARM-based laptop that we've been talking about a number of times. So this is your priority to make an ARM laptop? Yes. That's still something I think needs to be done. And uh, it still looks like nobody else is doing it, especially not with hardware that has completely open drivers and everything, which is a must-have for me. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, so did you come all the way? Uh, uh, let's go this way, I think. Sorry, five two. Did you come all the way from Switzerland? No, yeah, it's not that far. It's just yeah, two hours across Germany, the border. Right? Yes. So, uh, how many companies have you seen here? Oh, there must have been hundreds. <laughs> uh, about, it's, and, and it's all about trying to get mm. the ARM uh, laptop done. Yes, so I've talked to a couple of potential mainboard suppliers with the uh, uh, CPUs. It looks like the, um, in the past for the previous prototype we've used a Qualcomm 820 and that still seems a pretty good choice. There's also the 835 and the 845 coming up which will be the logical successor but Another thing that's coming up is the IMX8, and that is really interesting because, like the Qualcomm chips, it uh, has open graphics drivers with Vivante. And so, is it the IMX8 QM? Is that the one you like? The QM is pretty good, but that's more of a phone processor. And there's another one coming up, I think QMAX or so, that will be faster and more suitable for a laptop use case. All right. Let's find a Genia Tech. Where are they? Yeah, they're over there. Over there, okay. Sorry, let's go that way. <laughs> so, did you speak with them already? Yes. Is there is so. a good chance that they might be able to help? Probably. And, uh, they're making interesting boards uh, on the Qualcomm chips, and they also have a couple of interesting devices uh, with displays, so they might be able to help there, but I've also talked to a couple of other display companies. Now yeah, let's go there again and see <laughs> what else they can do. <laughs> you remember where they are? Yes, just right there. there. Cool. Because <laughs> uh, at the at the last Lenara Connect, when he uh, uh, Mr. Fang from uh, Genetech, when he showed up with this uh, tablet for 96 boards, that was pretty awesome. Though. Yeah, it is, and uh, they have it here. I think. Let me see. It's yeah. Right there. That's the final version. <laughs> That's in there. Uh, so yeah, I need to try to see if I can do a video with these these guys, <laughs> but they seem to be busy right now. So uh, yeah. he uh, doesn't seem to be around actually. Yeah. So what what else are you um, looking for around this conference? Because embedded is uh, hmm. a lot of embedded stuff. Mm, yeah, sure. So another thing that I've looked at a lot is uh, displays that will be used in the laptop and. Uh, trying to find someone who can make a proper keyboard and touchpad, but so far those guys don't seem to be here, so I'll have to continue that research on the internet. And of course there's always other interesting things not related to this project to look at. How about, uh, <laughs> let's send a message uh, in this video, let's send a message to Lenovo and HP and all the other guys in Taiwan that uh, they, should, they should totally reach out, right? Are you okay with them reaching out to you? Yeah, of course. Because it would be great to have a hmm. ThinkPad. Right. Arm ThinkPad. Because I've been going That's what solves so many problems. They have a proper case, they have a proper keyboard. One of <laughs> the best keyboard, hmm. one of the best keyboards, a really good keyboard. Uh, so because I, I, I keep asking them when I see them at the Mobile World Congress or the other, tr at the CES, when I see that they're making a Snapdragon, which is a interesting Snapdragon, but Lenovo and HP is just making a tablet. It's yes. only the Asus that's a proper laptop. Because you don't want to mm -hmm. have a tablet, right? You can Can you do work with a tablet with a keyboard? Dock I thing? Mean, you can take a tablet and attach a Bluetooth keyboard and a Bluetooth mouse, and you almost have a computer, but it's not really the same. Yeah. So mm -hmm. these guys, they just need to take a, a cool ThinkPad, pull out the yeah. pull out Meltdown, and pull in the arm. Right. No Meltdown. <laughs> I mean, it's a little bit more complicated than that because some of the internal electronics have to be adjusted to handle the different p uh, power supply needs and stuff, but how about in the, the end, it's... How about uh, uh, at Linaro, has it been uh, fun to work on the Spectre? 
what have they oh. been doing, those guys at, at the Linaro, to fix it? Basically, Linaro has fixed it? Yes. So all our builds have fi uh, fixes for this. This was mostly done in the security work group and then the segment groups like the Linaro mobile group, which I'm working for, have picked up their work and put it into our releases. How much is a penalty in terms of performance? Is it, it one or two percent? It depends or? on w uh, what exactly you're doing. And with most normal workloads, we've seen like the two to five percent, but there's a couple of special cases uh, where it can be almost 30%. But it was mainly an Intel bug, right? The meltdown is bigger, bigger yes. issue, right? Intel was affected more, but uh, to some extent, pretty much every process out there was affected. So uh, what else are you working on? Mostly still on Android optimizations and uh, looking at AOSP master uh, to see what is coming in P and uh, what we can do to help optimize that. Mm. Do, do you know what? There's a couple of other things like moving the existing phones to newer kernels just to show vendors that it can be done. <laughs> do you know why, uh, why I can't get uh, Android apps on the Chromium OS? It's not only for the Chrome OS. They're keeping the Android app support like closed for now. I haven't looked into it so far, but I've seen a couple of projects that, uh, that are trying to implement it. But in, the first thing I do to a Chromebook is uh, install a full-fledged Linux distribution, so I'm probably not the best expert on this, but yeah. it yeah. would actually be nice to see this in Chromium on a desktop Linux box as well. So are you so. going to buy a Snapdragon Windows computer? If they make one that, uh, that has a bootloader that is open enough to replace the OS, I might. Cool. Do you think there's a good chance they might do that? I hope so, but uh, they tend to like locking things down and for, uh, forcing someone to stick with whatever they put on, so I'd say there's probably a 50-50 chance that it will be open enough to do something useful with it. You, you don't mind paying Microsoft to delete their software, right? <laughs> Of course, I'd prefer not to, but uh, in the real world, when you buy a laptop, uh, regardless from what maker, it will have a Microsoft tax or even worse, an Apple tax included. Cool. So there's only uh, three hours left of the conference, so hopefully you can find some cool stuff. And yep. uh, I'll keep, keep updated to see if you have your arm locked up for the next uh, Linaro mm. Connect, right? Yeah. Well, you'll be there in Hong Kong in yeah. three weeks or so. Yeah. Huh. yeah, great. Cool. So looking forward to that. Yeah. Cool. So see you there. See you. <laughs>